Right, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm filming this on Saturday. So if you watch my last video, um, I did a little bit of an intro yesterday and I did a bit of an ending for all the clips I've done this week. Uh, and I did say I'll be back Sunday. Um, I'll film Sunday, but I've decided to do it Saturday. So uh, yeah, because I didn't know if I'd have finished my jacket or not and I finished it. So today's video is going to be a bit of a, a follow on of my jacket. Um, I'm not going to be doing any demonstrations in this video but I'll just tell you a bit of some of the steps that I didn't film um, and just what I've been making and what I've been doing and things kind of my usual kind of thing so uh, what shall I start with maybe I'll start with the jacket because I've kind of ended on the jacket I'll go back to that now you might have seen my finished jacket if you're following me on um, on Facebook my name is different on Facebook I'm actually um, Periwinkle Cottage Crafts and I'm Claire who makes things like I am on YouTube, uh, on Instagram. Um, I did try to change the Periwinkle Cottage Crafts to Claire who makes things because it would, wouldn't would confuse things as much, would it? But uh, just every time I try to do it, Facebook wouldn't let me do it. So yeah, I'm, I'm still good. I do like Periwinkle Cottage Crafts, but I don't tend to mention that name anymore because people know me more for Claire who makes things. Anyway, so if you did watch my last video, I hope you saw, um, like seeing all the steps that I showed you. I would have liked to show you further on but I can explain things to you. So the last point that you saw it um, I'd stitched the um, the facing bit down here together hadn't I? So what happens is when you've like gathered your sleeves and put your sleeves in and you've done the same to the lining uh, you then have to stitch the lining and the coat the right sides together from down here all the way round like that so basically you're looking at the back of your coat you get your lining and you're looking at it at the wrong side and you put it like that on top of it and then you stitch that and then you can flip it the right way now what you do with the sleeves of the lining you iron out over the amount that it says in the pattern so when you stuff them inside you can slip stitch them in there but before you do that you do apply these cuffs now what you do when you have your cuff piece you put them short ends together and there's notches on it so you sew one bit you leave a turning gap and then you sew another bit so then when you attach your cuff you're left with on the seam uh, it doesn't tell you to leave the gap on the outside the inside but I decided to leave the gap side on the inside so when you sew your sleeve on this is before the linings on there you you end up with a gap in that seam there so that's where you're going to put your elastic so um i had to wait a few days because i didn't have uh, any more elastic because i'd done the waistband but i couldn't put any elastic in these so then when you put your lining in you just hand tack it to here then because you've already pressed it uh, now regarding the uh, the bottom band it's very similar you don't leave any turning gaps you basically have your waistband piece you fold it wrong sides together along the long edge you basically do a basting stitch on the raw edge and then is there some, somebody at the door hang on bear with me sorry <laughs> Right, sorry, sorry about that. I'm always having to go to the door, aren't I? Basically, uh, it's fabric and it's this fabric and it's from Eliza Matt Fabric. I showed you a swatch in a previous video and uh, it's French Terry and it's got sharks all over it and, my, and he's mad for sharks and scuba diving and things like that so and it's his birthday in March so I am running a little bit out of time now um I'm just thinking so I might be able to get them done I don't think I'm gonna have enough to get a top out of it as well um it was just because I did you know when you're looking at your basket how much fabric's costing and you try and cut it down and I thought oh, we'll just see what happens so I might end up like um you know doing some sleep or doing a pocket or doing something else um so i can make him um you know some nice sharp pajamas for his birthday so i'll pop that down here that's quite good timing actually so i can show you that isn't it so back to the jacket when you do the waistband when you sew the waistband onto the you know your outer piece you've got two uh, raw ends down here then and that's where you put your elastic in so you insert your elastic and you just basically base that in at the sides so when you um um, regarding this 
bit here uh, as well. So forgetting the waistband a moment, see you've got this, you basically just stitch that right sides together. I, I really wish I could have filmed this for you, but I understand it, it you know, and stood it really easy. Uh, and then when you uh, end up sewing your waistband on, uh, and you sew, then you sew this bit together, so you end up with the raw edges sticking out here of this piece and this bit, but I just took tucked it in and then I hand tacked it along there. I think that's what you're supposed to do. So that's just hand tacked. And then regarding the lining, even though that's got a proper seam here, you do exactly the same with the lining as you did with the sleeve. You hand tack that all the way along. What you have to do is you have to gather it in uh, and then fold it over. I don't know if it would have been easier to fold it over after I've done my lines of stitching, you know, your basting that you're going to use for gathering. If it had been easier to press that line in, then gather it and then stitch it in. But I don't think the instructions told you that. So I basically was folding it as I went kind of thing. And I didn't know how it was going to look. But yeah, it looks it looks all right. So yeah, I'm really, really pleased with it. So um, I'll pop some photographs up on the screen uh, if you don't follow him on social media you might like to see the pictures of it on but i absolutely love it and it is very tiny uh, now i made the uk size 10 and i'm just letting you know like i don't ever buy a 10 or make a 10 but i uh, had a look at ex some examples of this and the jacket did look very very tiny and I, I love little cropped things that's what attracted me to this so little and cropped and i'm only five foot four i didn't think the length of it was going to be an issue for me but um you know some of the people people um that I know follow me and I follow them they're, they're a lot taller than I am so if you made this you'd probably want to lengthen it kind of thing but saying that I don't think uh even though I'm small I've got an out you know a very small body I think it's my legs that must be small I'm not I mean, I've said this before I'm not entirely sure and I've got these like long arms and things but yeah but I really like the length but I'm really glad I decided to size up now I did notice looking at it I probably could have gone smaller really look but do you know what I'm glad because I can get a jumper underneath this as well when I did a fitting on it I had like a sweater jumper and I could get and I could get that uh, on it so yeah I'm really really delighted with this jacket and um yeah i'm just sorry that uh, about like you know missing out some of the steps and in all honesty right i wasn't planning on even filming any of it right now you would know this that you haven't seen the beginning of the footage i've done for otterline do you know the one of the stuffed animals um from the lunar lapping book well she's not from a bookie she's the same designer but I've had it as a kit and uh, what's happened is uh, I started to film the start of that I haven't done any sewing yet it was just basically uh, you know the process I get to and laying things out and cutting things out and you get a glimpse of this in this jacket in pieces I go that's my thing I'm not, I'm not going to be filming that so I ended up not doing the otterline then because I need to sit I didn't want to do any sewing of that because I was still knitting because I kind of like do things in the evening and I've got to kind of choose it sometimes I'm doing red work sometimes I'm doing knitting sometimes it's crochet you know you know sometimes you know it's a bit of hand stitching and things so what so yeah so I have to kind of like and obviously those things take a lot of time so I have to kind of spread it out so sorry there's a notification coming up on the, on the phone I'm trying to ignore it I can look at them after can't I so yeah so I'm really really delighted because I managed to squeeze this out because if you know a bit of history behind this fabric oh yes because this is like a viscose from Guthrie and Garney and this is a, a, a tweed fabric but it's an acrylic and cotton um cotton mix a uh, what no acrylic and wool mix and it was just to keep the cost of it down because I was a pattern tester I'm sorry to say this again for the willow coat from Jennifer Lauren Handmade and uh, and I ordered the fabric for that and it's just uh, some I had left I could see I could get a garment out of it when I had a look and this fabric was what I bought as a kit to make the wilder gown from Guthrie and Garney and then it's just what I had left over from that so um, you have seen those makes in previous videos so um, I have got them here. Uh, this is my wilder gown, uh, but you know, my with my twist on it. 
Um, but I, I have seen actually sometimes when I post things and I had and um, add uh, hashtags to things, sometimes um, I see other people have done similar kind of things. So you know you think oh I'm not the only one with that idea. And this is my um, my willow coat um, from Jennifer Lauren Handmade. And if I show you inside. Um, yeah, because I managed to get that lining out of it. So, yeah, so I think I've done really well out of all those fabrics. I'll pop those down here. Um, are you going to be seeing the last of that fabric? Probably not, because I make the stuffed animals. Um, yeah, there will be some little uh, garments. I, I'll cut out some little, if I haven't lost them all, some little pieces for little animal clothing so uh, uh yeah so they will be coming at some point and i'll show you what, what i've got left i think i had four meters and i've still got this even after cutting a few animal bits out already i'll probably cut more so i've got that piece yes yeah, so i'm definitely going to be able to make some little um toy clothing aren't i and oh and there's all there's more here <laughs> All the ends. I need to have a bit of a tidy up. I think there's dust everywhere. I'm going to start coughing, aren't I? And this is what I've got left of the um, of that other fabric. I've told you what it's called before. It's called, I don't know if it's available, uh, Radiance by Penelope. And it says Europe on it. It is folded in half. So actually, see it's sticking together. I forgot. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Oh no, it's pins. Well, there is something I've got to tell you. Um, there is a bit of an uh, adhesive um, that leaked onto this fabric. So inside my sleeve, uh, there is a bit of an ad adhesive um, on, on this fabric. But the way it happened, the bit that I'd, I didn't realise I'd cut that bit out. I tried to avoid it, but I still managed to get some. The um, It ended up in the in the seam so it disappeared which is great isn't it so yeah so i've still got this that and then that short bit in between oh there's another pin in there let's get that pin on that look and that piece so I'm not done, am I? I'm not done with that fabric. So, yes, yeah, so great. And you'll be pleased for me because, remember, I ordered some um, fabric to make my hoods and pants and I was having a bit of a hissy fit about it because I was getting a bit annoyed seeing other people's hoods and pants popping up on Instagram and things and I couldn't make mine. And I've had a bit of a disaster because I've ordered fabric twice to make them and it's not worked out. I've ordered something that was unsuitable and then I ordered something thinking they was in the UK and they were then actually in Germany well it went on and on and on the fabric hadn't come and I actually opened a dispute on PayPal because I hadn't had the fabric but then the fabric arrived so I've had to close the uh, dispute down and everything but this is the fabric but now nah, you're not going to believe it I'm not happy right and it's not, I'm not not happy with the fabric right the fabric you know itself is fine but this is it, it's French terry and it's grey and it's kind of a bit mottled look, lovely, right? And then my plan was, I was going to make hoods and pants, try those out for the first time because I've not made them and maybe make the billy sweatshirt again because I've got the dress version but make it in the sweatshirt but I think I was going to raise it because I watched, um, whose video did I watch? I might have watched... Um, Lauren Guthrie's video and she was saying out of a few of these jumpers that she'd made the billy was the longest jumper out of all of them now I'd made those other jumpers uh, apart from one of them so actually I, I know I find the linden a bit long for me really with my high-waisted things so I, I knew I'd probably shorten the billy but then I realised now I didn't know this but I saw another Instagrammer. Another Instagrammer had made some jogging bottoms and a sweatshirt and she'd made them in grey and she said what I didn't realise is I've made myself a prison outfit. Now I didn't know what prisoners wear. I just imagine like American prisoners in their bright orange and I imagine like do you know like ones out of like the Beano or something with the stripes or do you know like 
looked fancy dressed black and white drops i don't really know what prisoners wear these days and uh but yeah they wear gray gray jogging buttons and gray um you know sweater top so i don't really want to make myself a prison outfit really do i not unless i just want to sit around the house and then i had a look at the hashtag of all the hoods and pants and people have done some gorgeous versions you know like with real contrasting things and i thought these are gonna look really boring so and now i'm not really in the mood for hoods and pants because there's you know there's a bit of a spring in the air in here in this part of the uk i don't know what it's like for everybody out there but my daffodils are starting to pop up you know not they're not flowering or anything and uh my plants um that's for my, my cat that we planted where where uh he's buried um he um he it basically he um that that plant is starting to bud and i pruned it as well this week so yeah spring is in the air and i don't really know i might even make myself another billy dress because i have to say um i like i love my south bank sweater dress i really do but obviously with the polar neck when the weather starts to change it's going to be a bit warm isn't it but the billy being a round neck a crew neck it's going to be a bit more wearable so i might make myself another billy dress at some point to wear but don't hold me to it i might change my mind so that is that then um I've, i have finished some more knitting now you've seen harry um the dog that i've knitted and i knitted his little neckerchief and things and you've seen that and you've seen him in his basket because i knitted that but i've knitted a little bit more so now he's got a jacket now so you saw him before in this but now he's got this little coat now there's um there's two other coats i could make but i think i'm going to leave that for now because i think i want to crack on with my otterline in all honesty so i feel that uh harry is very equipped isn't he now he's got a basket he's got a little bandana he's got a coat and i've knitted his lead so uh yeah you kind of yeah it's quite unusual actually i shall pop it on him i've not photographed him in his coat yet um or his lead i'll just pop these on there you go mister right and that's his little lead. That it, or if you like crochet, right, and uh, or you knit and things, that it looks like crochet, doesn't it? Like what? Well, basically, it was really unusual. The uh, the knitting. You basically you cast on a hundred stitches, and then you what do you end up doing? Then you you kind of like knit two together and yarn over knit two together yarn over knit two together yarn over kind of i don't know if that was the next row or the row after it might have been the not the first proper knitting row it might have been the next one yeah and then you and then you cast off kind of thing so yeah it was but it ended up like giving it kind of like a crochet kind of look about it um yeah it doesn't look knitted does it but yeah it's definitely knitted so i absolutely love harry um you know and i really like that designer i know a few of you since watching my videos i've gone and found the designer because she's on etsy like when i've bought from her i've done it through the um shopping channel her chanda but uh yeah so yeah, i've absolutely in, really really love sometimes i'm just in the mood for just doing a bit of knitting and it's so nice to if you've bought a kit and it was in a little paper bag put aside as long as you when you go decide i've got you get, oh, well, i want to do this you've got the right size needle my husband says uh, it, i'm like him with spanners you think you've got every size and then when you go to do something you haven't got the right size that's what i'm on for and i'm a devil with crochet hooks because sometimes i start something and it's in a bag with that size crochet hook and i leave it in there so i don't remember what hook i was using and then i end up like with a few missing crochet hooks so what is the next thing i'm going Going to talk about right right i think this is the last thing now um this do you want to join me from a blast from the past now oh and i'll tell you what i'm wearing i'm not wearing something homemade i'm wearing it now i've bought this right it is a kids t-shirt and legging set and i've bought it because well one i liked it and then i thought when it wears out i'm gonna copy it so have a look right look at this 
it's nice isn't it it's really quick it's got a seam down the front and it's got this knot here and i really like it so and it's got a band on it look a band around the bottom so i think i'll be like you know picking this apart and and fine i'm guessing how they've got this knot in the middle it's cut out because I've done this centre seam kind of thing. So, yeah, I can't... It'll pull my part with one of those, though. I cut it to pieces when it wears out. And then I can't remember how it goes back together. I'll probably have to take a load of photographs, actually. I did that when I was hemming... At re, like, at shortening the curtains in the garden room. Um, I, I, it, was, it was put together re, different to how I make curtains. So, uh, yeah, I took a few photographs. And what it is, I did need to do a bit of slip stitching on the four corners at the bottom. But I just left a pin in. And I thought, oh, I'll do that, you know, whenever. I mean, maybe when it warms up and the floor's less cold and I've got to sit on my bottom because I'm going to do it while they're up. And my husband goes, you left a pin in the curtains. And I'm like, yeah, it was supposed to be there. I said, what if it is? I've pulled it out so one of them I've got a repin but you don't even notice these pins sitting there so yeah um so yeah basically t-shirt and like it was a legging set basically and it is kids H&M but uh blast from the past this is what I'm going to end up on now uh, it gives me the fear of dread right when my mum had brings round a bag of my old belongings right out of the loft or something and I think oh no what now and sometimes it's not even stuff that was mine right but um, when I dropped um, my mum's birthday present round on the doorstep my mum handed me a carrier bag here's some of your old things I was like oh mum what are you giving me now and because what it is I said you know you know I'm a hoarder because I'm a hoarder and then sometimes when I get these like old beloved things from childhood I don't really want to let them go but I like to think oh I remember them and then you give them me and I can't I can't get rid of things so this is the bag she gave me now remember I'm 40 and I left home uh, when I was 21, right, I've never been back home to live and so I haven't lived there in a long time so it's took my mum a while to give me a few bits here and there but I used to like going clubbing, I live like in the Midlands and you've got a lot of access to nightclubs so you know you get a lot of people that like clubbing in this area so I used to go to nightclubs you know I used to like put my hair in like crack loads of ponytails and do crazy things I used to go with paint on my face I used to have diamantes coming up here I had glow sticks you know we, we you know we, we went a bit crazy we had fluorescent things you know when we parted basically and I used to wear like furry bras, furry boots and things, right? So my mum gave me this bag of stuff and look what's in it. Now, I used to wear boots made of this. Basically, they were knee-high boots that you make covers for. And can you believe I used to wear that? And I used to cover a bra and have a furry bra and I used to, and wear white hot pants. Can you can you believe this so it just i just couldn't believe it you know when all these memories come flushing back of these days of my youth and uh yeah and look at this i don't you know i, I think it was a bra i might have had in that and these oh and i love the i had furry boots in this and I loved them I absolutely loved my white furry boots I thought I looked the bee's knees in these boots I did you know so you know it's just so funny and uh so what am I gonna do <laughs> with this fur it's like you know a bit like cheap it was from uh i think we got it from the fancy silk store in birmingham all those years ago and uh and what else oh yeah a bit more a bit more of it and a bit more what's oh they had some yarn i bet that wasn't even mine my mum's just trying to get rid of her old tat isn't she i know she does that there's a there's a crayola in here but that's my mum's as well. She does that sometimes. I know your game, Mum. And these made me laugh. Now, uh, 
when I was a young girl, uh, you know, my parents used to have like, you know, these hi-fi systems. You'd have a ma mahogany hi-fi cabinet, right, with a hi-fi system in it. And then you could play like tapes and then you'd lift up the lid and then you'd have the record player on the top. And I remember when like things were kind of going more down the CD route and things, they were, you know, and then you'd have one with a CD, but you might have one with a tape, a CD and a record. But I had a record player. Like I did, as I um, got into my late teens, I did have DJ decks, you know, when you'd, you'd have a record in, a record in, a mixer. And I used to mix these tunes into each other like I was really into dance music and I'd mix that tune into that one and go back and forth kind of thing and I did have those but before that when I was younger I had just had a record player in the bedroom and my mum's given me a couple of my vinyls now have a look at this look does there anyone in the UK in the UK you remember these E17 that this song is probably what made them the most I was into E17, um, like probably when no one really knew about them. I think their first song was like All Right or you know, All Right or something like that. But uh, yeah, I really they were like from uh, L London, Walthamstow, and yeah, and I went to see them in concert and things. And uh, so yeah, they were get they were get really quite famous by this point. So yeah, that's an actual record player. And have a look at this one. They're fab, aren't they? How good is that? And it, there's no cover on them. I don't know what's happened to the covers, but this one, uh, it's Let It Rain. And on the A side, it's the Thunder Radio Edit. And B side is the J-Pack Sleeting Edit. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, my husband, uh, he um, he actually ha does have debt um now again he, he went for a spell he didn't have them but during lockdown he bought some second hand ones and he did them all up so we, we we can play records again now so i might uh get these on the go and have a listen so hopefully they're not too scratch i, I do think there's a bit of damage looking at it looks like something's stuck on it yeah i don't know how well they're gonna play but that's gonna be a lot of fun isn't it so yeah from the 90s a blast from the past isn't it so yeah that's a lot of fun so yeah i hope you've enjoyed uh taking a trip down memory lane for me and um oh yeah and there's one more thing i'm going to tell you about before i go because i was waiting for the elastic for um my jacket and i couldn't finish it planning has started for my frugal frock so i have been drawing out pieces i've actually cut out a few pieces of fabric for the top half i haven't sewn anything together but you know i don't obviously i don't know if this is going to be my frugal frock and i have basically got the fabric i'm going to use that you know so i've been proper frugal so uh yeah so i but i think i'm going to uh, i'm not gonna really i think i might keep it all a big surprise now we, right regarding my frugal frock so um yeah so i might go a little bit quiet for a minute maybe because if i do the frugal frock for a bit and i'll and I, can't, I want to keep it a surprise obviously i won't have anything to show you but maybe what i can do alongside that is the otterline but you might have to watch me sewing that from my bedroom because that's where i do uh do my hand stitching mainly i don't tend to do much hand stitching sitting in here so yeah so that's what's going to be going on now probably hand project otterline and frugal frock in here so i hope you've enjoyed what i've bought you today and we've been really lucky there's been no noise there was a little bit of noise this morning it was the road sweeper went down one way and came back again but there's only a bit of traffic i can hear at the moment but um but yeah i don't think they're doing any work on this school today thank goodness so uh yeah because it does drive me a bit crazy and obviously when this window has been changed uh, it's not going to be as noisy um you know and they're changing the road a little bit outside so i have to go a little bit slower so yeah so uh, yeah so that's it for today
Right, I forgot to tell you something, and it's about the jacket, and it's quite important. Now, if you watch my video of me making this, you'll see that I accidentally unzipped the zip, and it come off the top, and I had to get it back on again. I decided to leave that in, because I thought, you know what, these kind of things happen. However, um, I didn't think about it, but obviously later on, if I'd have left the zip the way it is... Um, the, it would come off, wouldn't it, right? So, um, yeah, So and I couldn't get the stoppers off the zip. I did explain that in the video. So I ordered a zip repair kit from Amazon. And what I did, when it came, it had some stoppers on it. So basically, I just applied, after the jacket was made, I just put the stoppers on and pinched them together. So now, when I zip it, it's not going to come off. Because as yet, I thought to myself, what's going to happen? Because I thought, if you kind of bend your zip back on itself with the teeth, obviously it's not going to come off then, is it? But you can, you were cutting the zip a bit off to the perfect length, so it would have come just flying off the end if I'd zipped it all the way up to the top, and I wouldn't have actually been able to get the zip back on then, because you have to thread it from the top to get it on. So I'm sorry I forgot to mention that. Hopefully you see it, because I don't... I don't know if I'm putting this on at the end or if I'm going to fit it in. I find it really difficult to squeeze a video in because I talk 100 mile an hour without a breath. Sometimes it's hard to try and piece a little bit in. So, um, yeah, so that's what I did. But I forgot to say. All right, then, thank you so much. And I'm definitely going now. Bye. Um, I've really enjoyed showing you what I've been up to. And I'll, I'll look forward to coming back with another video. Okay, thank you. Bye. Oh, the door again. Bye.